report. Um, but then um, area on aging, it should just say no report. And then under that, I would recommend it say, Lonnie recommended contacting Tammy Edison um, for vision zero at a future meeting type of thing. But it's kind of all put together. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it shouldn't be. Boulder County Agency on Aging should just say no report. Okay. And then the next thing could be recommended contacting Cami for Vision Zero. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. You got that? Okay. Any other corrections? If not, uh, someone make a motion to approve the minutes. <laughs> John, second. Uh, Art. Okay. All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Uh, motion carries. All right. Public invited to be heard. Is there anybody here that wishes to be heard? Of course not. <laughs> we want to hear from the public, so we'll move on to public business. Um, I apologize if for putting you off a little bit, but I think it's important that we hear the first item on the agenda. And so I'll ask uh, uh, Christina to go ahead with item eight. Sure, sure. And um, Ronnie, please add um, anything that I might miss. So at our last meeting, um, I think there were some questions uh, that I needed to follow up on with uh, our city attorney and our finance department as far as um, two things. One, um, the um, the uh, donation um, uh, resources uh, by advisory uh, board members. Um, and then the second piece of things, I, I checked in with finance in our city attorney's office on both, and they had some follow-up questions for me and, and Ronnie and I have been in a couple of, of meetings. Um, we, um, we're given the, the Charter 7.1, um, which uh, talks about city boards and commissions um, need to be advisory in character. And so um, having advisory boards uh, out getting donations, those kinds of things, that really um, uh, clashes with our, with our charter. Um, and as far as the, the uh, municipal code around powers and duties, I think there was some concerns about the food um, uh, drive or food hub really not aligning with that. Um, and so uh, the example that was given to us really talked about how um, how friends boards work with advisory boards. That the, the, the role of this board is really to be at that 30,000 foot view, looking at policy, making policy recommendations to council, and then council sets that policy direction for staff. Um, and uh, like I said, what uh, our, our city attorney talked about was how other, other organizations do this. For example, um, at the library, they have a friends organization um, that is the nonprofit that really does that kind of, of um, uh, activity or, um, or project like the book club. They have a book sale that they, that they have. Um, and that really isn't the, the advisory board's capacity to do that. So that was um, pointed out as far as um, having advisory boards uh, have our, uh, our uh, tax exempt form. Um, that isn't something that would be, that would be recommended um, or would be allowable by the, by the city. Um, anything that I missed? Um, just that clear distinction, making sure that we're separating the advisory board is separating from program. Um, program uh, projects, as you, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. right? making sure that we're staying away from some of those responsibilities that, that, that loop in planning. Um, planning um, uh, creates or identifies roles and responsibilities with the, with the staff to support um, mm -hmm. that project. And... Um, being clearly stated, being being more of that advisory, making those recommendations mm -hmm. to city council to support that work, and then from there being able to identify staff and the responsibilities, so making sure we're going through that process. Mm -hmm. The the piece that I shared with um, John as I was kind of working through all of this was some of the um, 
some of the work or some of the um, the connections that our council makes at the National League of Cities. Um, I think you know I shared some some information um, with John uh, on that website, and they have a, a food security um, uh, effort in in within National League of Cities, and and where I thought would be helpful for this board to really look at is with the data that you've collected, with the people that you've talked with in the community, I think that you know presentation could be made to council to say, we have gathered all of this data. We would encourage you, council, as you attend the National League of Cities to really connect into that track of, um, of, the, of the conference. Um, because I think that um, what that could do is then give them the information, not only from the community, but what's happening at a national level. And should they choose, then they can come back and with our city manager, give some policy direction to then, um, you know, our city, <coughs> city, our city manager would operationalize that um, by directing staff to, to um, and providing those resources to um, make sure that we would move that forward. And so that's kind of how it looks in my mind, kind of at that 30,000 foot view. Um, and that's kind of what I what I had, had shared with, with John. So any questions? Why? Does that mean, would it be possible for the friends to look into doing some food distribution? So the friends as a body could decide that they wanted to fund that. I would um, also say, however, um, that the same kind of caveat that I that I um, that we talked about in, in this meeting, um, as far as the utilization of staff resources um, right. to make that happen, I think that uh, that needs to be really, um, really, really looked at. I think the other piece that we have discovered is that there are other organizations that do this um, and do this quite well. So the Our Center Community Food Share. Um, and what we would really want to be mindful of is that mission creep. And so is it really the friends of senior services role, I, I would ask, um, to provide that? Um, or is there a partnership that would be better served um, with one of our existing work, nonprofit organizations that the city already funds um, to do some of this work? So th that's a question that I would ask. But, it is in their purview to decide how they want to spend those funds. Now, um, we as volunteers could volunteer to, to help anybody, right? We could help. It would need the, to be a partner. All, right. Would need to right. be totally apart from your role as an advisory board right. member. Yep. Okay. So you would do it as a volunteer. As right. a volunteer, right. not, as a, not as an advisory. Yeah, just also, to keep that distinction really clear. <clears throat> I, I said I was going to contact the uh, Child and Youth Organization Child and ask them if they're still giving out food, but I didn't. Mm -hmm. What would you recommend be the best way to do that? Just give them a call and ask them if they're still doing food distribution? Um, yeah, and I don't know if Ronnie has had the chance to um, work with uh, with Hilda, um, part of what, um, and I think I mentioned this maybe last meeting, meeting before, we had our department retreat. Um, and in that department retreat, we really broke up into work group um, teams. And so we had people from children, youth, and families, people from um, senior services working together on a team to develop goals uh, to, to um, move forward in 2025. And so I think that food piece probably landed um, with our after school recreation program. And I don't have that information yet, what they're um, wanting to look at for 2025 um, and, and beyond. Um, but uh, I think a good connection would be Ronnie and Hilda to, to kind of talk about that because I, I don't know what meetings they have had with, with their team members. I just feel like there are refrigerators out there that are available by community, by Longmont Food Rescue. Yes, right. and I'd love to utilize them, right. you know, and, and maybe Lashley is one of the places that could have one, or right. you know, other places in the city. Right, but and, and they do, do the have a, they do have a, a refrigerator. Um, when they I was do. when I was at the scene at the youth center, 
Um, we did get um, uh, uh, food from Lama Food Rescue. I, I don't know where. They don't have a. Been. They don't have one of our refrigerators. There's a free refrigerator There's inside the refri youth mm -hmm. center uh -huh. for like run by the youth center. Right. Staff. Right. Yes. So yes. we used to have food from Lama Food Rescue um, when Kyle was there. Um, oh, we yeah. would get sandwiches. We would get all kinds of things from. Um, from uh, Longmont Food Rescue. Then I think what happened, there was a dip um, in participation after COVID. I, I think now COVID. they're probably to the point um, where they may need that resources resource, but that really is a staff programmatic call. Like I wouldn't make that call for Hilda and team. They would really need to be the ones to look at that and then reach out to Naomi if that is appropriate. And I, we do bring some food to the okay, center to still Giselle. Yep. to Giselle, and uh, we have discussed a fridge potentially, okay. like a, a partnership there, of, like yeah. a community fridge. It just needs to, yeah, like you said, have a discussion with yeah. Hilda and some other folks. There. Yeah, and I think that's a perfect example of how to support. So there is an organization that already does this, and so how can we, how can we uh, booster, bolster what what they're doing? How can we do the same with, with the Hour Center? Is it, you know, do they need volunteers from, you know, friends or advisory board to, to serve meals? Like, how do they do that? I know back in the day, people used to go in and cook meals. I don't, I don't know what the what the setup is uh, with Hour Center now. Right. But those were the kind of questions, those would be the kind of questions that I would ask. What do you, what's already in place um, that we can, can contribute to? Then let me ask this, this just occurred to me. Um, as a group, could we go one day and cook lunch at the Hour Center? Do you know how they bring in groups to take care of the lunch for the, for the day? Could Not as that? a senior center advisory board. Again, you're at the policy level, but as a as a as a volunteer, um, you Lonnie could could uh, you know talk to their food service director and say, "Hey, I would like to volunteer," but not as an advisory group okay. because again, that's at the policy level. So would that require a health permit, a food handler's permit, in order to do that? I, I don't know what the yeah, what what the hour center. My guess is that they have they have their kitchen licensed, yeah, um, sure. and and they handle all of that. And it would really be a matter of um, of you know you, Arlene, or me, Christina, approaching the hour center and saying, "I'd like to volunteer. How might I do that?" Okay. Anybody else? Okay. <clears throat> I got one question. Okay. You're exactly right. Being a volunteer. Okay, so yeah. hey, right. I wasn't is. too far off. You, you just go and you volunteer, and then if you want to work in the kitchen, you can. So and you're you a regular chef. That's the ah, yes, 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 yes. So you're a volunteer, um, but you don't do it on behalf of the senior center advisor. Group. I did. got it. I did it before I was on. Perfect. Yeah. So thank you. That was really valuable information. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Took a little it. bit. So, yeah. I got I got one question. I've been thinking about this a lot. Okay. And just where do we fit in, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And as I remember Chuck's comments uh, a meeting or two ago, he said something when we were talking about supplement programs and whatever. I think he said something like, we only would subsidize or provide funds for something that has to do directly with, with, the, the, with the senior center and okay. on site. Okay. I think he said something like Okay, if that's true, and then if we're basically advisory in nature, and we things go up to the city council, and at the same time, we're, let's say for XYZ program, and at the same time, we have agreement from the friends group for XYZ program. <clears throat> it seems like, and Bonnie, I think you told me once, you need to have, if we're going to accept money, Put into your budget, for example, we have to get city council approval, and then it would go back down through whatever payments <coughs> your allocation <coughs> process is. So the money would come out and staff or resources at your level to provide the services that we recommended, that our friends supported, and that's kind of our involvement, mm -hmm. other than the 30,000 foot policy recommendations. Right. Right. Do I have that right? Is that close? Well, yeah, yeah. I think the other piece to that is that where it requires city council approval um, really are in in two ways. One is if it is a, um, a, a money that comes from another government agency, so um, a state grant, a federal grant, um, that has to be approved by city council um, to uh, 
to, um, to be able to accept that. It has to be an intergovernmental agreement. Um, the other way that city council has um, oversight of this is in our appropriations. So there's four appropriations each year, um, one every three months. And so say we were to get um, $100,000 from Longmont Community Foundation or from, um, uh, from the Friends of, uh, of Longmont Senior Services, um, Ronnie would um, include that in the appropriation that would come up in, in March or whatever. Um, and then city council would look at all of the appropriations um, and uh, approve them at that point. And so those are the two, two ways, but yes, you're, you're correct. They do see it at that level. Okay, any other questions? So let me see if I'm a bit confused here. It sounds to me like what you are suggesting is that we um, work with some of these, like our center or food rescue or some of these places as volunteers, um, and that's how we will work as an advisory board. Not as an advisory board. The, no, but I mean board. as a volunteer, yeah. Right, but, but it wouldn't be on behalf of the advisory right. board at all because the advisory board as a body cannot get involved in programmatic efforts. I got that. Yeah, got but that. you as a wrong. you as a, a person or name could decide that you want to volunteer for the Hour Center or for Safe Shelter or Wild Plum. Like you could do that apart. And so I'm not making the recommendation that any of you should volunteer um, at any place, but should you want to, um, like in, in Anne's case, um, should you want to, that that is a, an opportunity in, in the community. Okay, so it sounds like that's the direction that you want us to go as individuals. So what we have been trying to do is not gonna be acceptable. Not acceptable in terms of, of the operationalizing of it. And so um, running a, a, a food hub, providing transportation, like driving a van for people, that is, is programmatic. Um, the, the involvement that I would see that the, the, the board has is really, like Dave said, at that 30,000 foot view um, to really give that information to city council and say, as an advisory board, this is what we have learned. Um, and some possible um, outcomes of that could be, A, that you really explore this through the National League of Cities to see what's happening on a national level, mm -hmm. um, or, or B, um, look at securing um, you know, funds um, through the city to, to, um, to meet, this, meet this need. And that could look about a variety of different ways. The city already has human services agency funding. Do you want to make a recommendation that the food service, that the people who are, are providing, um, uh, really closing the gap on food insecurity, Longmont Food Rescue, our center, um, you know, I'm sure I'm missing community food share, I'm sure I'm missing um, others. You could make a recommendation that, hey, um, you would like um, more funds leveraged for that specific area. Using okay. the data that you have collected. And that's something I'll cover in, in the meeting we had with Jeff and Ronnie. You're saying that information came up. Okay. Uh, what next step would you do? Right. And our department manages the human services agency funding, which an advisory board like this reviews applications, they score them, and then uh, in December we take that to city council and say, okay, we would like to fund the X percentage of this. Um, in in um, health and, and wellness, um, you know this percent in in addressing unhoused issues, and so we lay that out for council, and they say yes, that that's acceptable, or no, make the make these modifications, and so that's where I think that that the um, research and the information that you all have when you present to council next year um, is really good information for them to have as they go forward and they make funding recommendations. It's a lot of work for me. <laughs> okay. it, is. it is a lot of work. The other day, uh, well, just a couple of weeks ago, the American Legion had a open house, if you will. Okay. Movaldo Valdez uh -huh. asked for materials to give out there. Okay. I went, 
and assisted him. Okay. Because he asked me if I go. I mean, is there any kind of violation there? Because I mean, I I guess we were represent. I mean, we were given out materials for the senior center, but uh, I didn't know if we did anything wrong. No, no, no. Sounds like he's volunteering at that point. Right. Okay. I'll just volunteer. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I I don't think that there is. I mean, if you think of like other community events that we have. you know, Cinco de Mayo, for example, I know that staff and advisory board and staff and city council, they partner to really do that exact same thing, okay. give out information. It really is that that programmatic, like, you know, if you wanted to go to the, um, to the, was it American Legion? The American yes. Legion and um, have, uh, and prepare taxes for people on behalf of the senior okay. center, that then would, that would, that right. would not be acceptable because that really would be programmatic. Okay, but I guess it's fair to say in that same capacity, at any point, anybody could collect collect flyers, attend an event on their own, Absolutely. and distribute them, right? Because yeah. it it was it's not um, on behalf of the senior center. We have the programming piece. We haven't identified that need. We haven't said we wanted our staff and our advisory board to work together to right. provide that. Right. It's just on your own if you wanted to grab right. those. Sounds yeah. good. I want to make sure. Yeah, no, and it's similar to city council attending um, an event, and a parent comes up to them and says, "Can you? I need help with my with my child or my teenager. What does the city have?" And you know, a city council member could say, "You know, contact this person and children need their families, or here is this here is this pamphlet." Um, it would be similar to that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Okay, maybe we can move on. You took one five minutes. Sorry, sorry, I tried to talk fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. I'm going to bring you to water really quick. Yeah. Anytime you can clarify stuff like that for us, it's really Absolutely. helpful. Absolutely, yeah. it's my pleasure. to do it this My time. pleasure. I'm going to grab some more. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, old business for a way out here. Oh, we were going to move to. Uh, I'll go directly to the C item C food insecurities and John was on the Yes. Before I before I start the board, I had the opportunity to meet with some people who did some of my history stuff here. I have no idea what that was. I went to one of their. I guess party park. It was incredible to see food was put on the tables. People came by. Took the food and whatever, and it gave me the first thought about why are they doing, why are they doing this? It's free, I understand that, but what's the need here? And that's what started me my whole path about bringing food insecurity to the group. I was really impressed by Naomi's group, and so I wanted to ask her and ask her to come and interview her and a couple other people, and we decided that Naomi was the person to speak to us about what they're doing. So, Naomi Curl, Executive Director, Long Walk Food Rescue. Thank you. Yeah, well, I will take it off the Yeah, Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, Sorry, one second. Yeah, I'm just trying to get the projector to work. I'm going to watch out for this light here. Hmm. So I can do it to add a
Okay. Uh, I know, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Hi, I'm Naomi Curlin. I'm the executive director of Longmont Food Rescue, and I want to share a little bit about our background, our programs, and then some of the potential <coughs> partnerships with the Senior Center. Um, I've been with the organization since 2020, and I've been in the food rescue world for a decade before that so it's my passion and i'm really excited to talk about the senior center re-engaging as a food hub so our mission is to redistribute nutritious food that might otherwise go to waste to keep people experiencing food housing and financial insecurity while educating our local communities about food justice so we really do try to emphasize nutritious food and prioritize that when we can we work with farmers markets and local growers throughout the growing season. We also work with grocery stores, prioritize stores like uh, Sprouts and Whole Foods that give high quality organic products. So we're really looking at increasing the nutritional value in the free health, uh, hunger uh, support system because often nutritional value is moving for things that is not highly prioritized when talk, we talk about feeding people. So what we do, we take food, as I said, from grocery stores, farmers markets, farms, restaurants, other food providers, sometimes convenience stores, and uh, we bring it directly to where people need it, um, both in residential settings and food hubs, existing places where people might already be seeking services. So we can look where maybe people might be gathering outside of residential programs and bring the food to where the people are and, uh, and just really try to open up access and utilize where people could use that support. So some of our programs, uh, no cost grocery. This is the residential side, but also we have worked with the senior center in the past on this. So prior to 2020, we were bringing food to the senior center. The picture on the left, um, where it says, brought each second Monday by Longmont Food Rescue with Reels on Wheels, that was a share table that was set up at the senior center that when people were coming and getting meals for lunch and stuff, they could also take some groceries home with them. Um, that program shut down in 2020 when the senior center shut down and as things have been reopening we are looking to re-engage some partnerships around having a share table again and then on the right there's different um uh, residential programs we work with Longmont housing authority to identify senior uh, living facilities where they might already be receiving food resources or needing food resources and how can we supplement that so um, i think community food share was mentioned earlier as a resource that exists on a, on a large scale. Um, they do the elder share program, and so usually if a residential site is receiving elder share, they already are shown at risk, at need for food resources. Elder share does usually every other week deliveries. A lot of it's non perishable foods, a lot of it is shelf stable, and so we try to supplement that at these residential sites with the type of food that you see in these photos stuff that is from the farmer's market, stuff that's nutritious and fresh. Um, other programs, we do open food distributions that anyone can come to. We really are about removing barriers to access and any red tape. So if you feel you need food resources, you can come to one of our events. We don't take proof of need, identification, paperwork. There's no waiting to get a registration card. The only question we ask at our food distributions is how many people are you feeding? So we can try to provide an appropriate amount of food for that family. Um, and so we have a drive up model and a walk up model. We do these twice a month and we do additional produce heavy pop ups during the summer where we add on an extra juice distribution each month uh, that is mostly harvested from local farms in the area. So again, identifying when we have excess nutritional food, making sure it gets out in our community, utilized, and, and really just connecting people with food that's already produced in Longmont and the surrounding area that they might not otherwise have access to due to financial barriers, transportation barriers, other types of barriers to access. Um, also in the growing months, we operate Fresh Food Connect, which is a separate app that any home gardener can sign up for. So if you grow your own food and you have too many zucchinis or tomatoes this time of year, uh, you can uh, upload a donation. Our volunteers come by uh, once a week to pick up those donations. 
and bring them to our programs. We, this one right now goes to the in-between pantry. So if you know the in-between, they do transitional housing for people coming out of homelessness, and they have a food pantry a couple times a week. That's where this food this year is going. Um, and also folks can choose to deliver their own donations to our community fridges. So that is the other big uh, program that we've done for now two years. This program's two years old. Um, so these are the first food hubs in Longmont that people, anyone can access any time of day, 24 seven. Right now, all the fridges we have are uh, outdoors so they can be accessed um, whenever people are in the neighborhood. And you can't always guarantee there's gonna be food in them, but we do fill them multiple times a week. We maintain the cleanliness, the functioning of them all, and, um, and check in on what type of food's in there so we can clean things out as needed. Um, but they really are unique in Longmont right now. They are creating additional food hubs for people um, who can't access food during uh, other service hours or for other various barriers to entry for those food services. So I know our center, can you food here, both of those were mentioned earlier today. Our center is wonderful. They do great work. They also have limited operating hours and a lot of folks are working during those hours. And so trying to fit that in with childcare and a fold up job, sometimes they can't get there in the right operating hours to access those food services. Our center also requires um, some paperwork to access their services and to get registered in their system. That can be a barrier to access for many people as well. So our center is a partner of ours, we love them, but we provide the services that do fill in those gaps and service that other people might not be able to access the food there. Okay, what's the file cabinet? So the file cabinets serve as dry goods pantry. So each of our fridges is paired with a dry goods pantry so people can donate and access full types of food. Um, and we found file cabinets work really well, especially for outdoor venues, because they can close all the way, they're fully sealed off, um, very protected uh, from the elements. And you can see in the center we had uh, Longmont High School uh, football team did a uh, painting for us as one of their volunteer projects two years ago for our first set of fridges. So we also make these fridges and pantries a community art piece. So working with local high school volunteers, we also work with um, Firehouse Art Center. So they did the designs for the two units you're seeing on the screen right now, and have also helped with some of the painting at other, uh, other locations. So um, yeah, bringing together community to create beautiful pieces of community art that then also serve a really good uh, service in the in the community for food access so just a couple more pictures of what um the outdoor fridge settings can be um the photo in the center is at the heart of longmont church um, where uh, one of the community projects was to build a hutch to help protect that fridge from the elements since it did not have an overhang protection um, you can see the fridge units on the left here are on a porch under uh, an overhang, so that was pretty protected. And then on the right, that is um, at Longmont United Hospital. They're one of our host sites, and it is under a walkway over cover, uh, covered over, um, so it has good protection there as well, so a hutch was not needed. So those are some of the siting things when we site outdoors, what we look for, um, and the ability to add a, a hutch if need be. Uh, I just wanted to put in a note about liability because this comes up whenever we talk to new potential host sites. Good Samaritan Food uh, Donation Act protects food donors against the liability when the donation happens through a nonprofit, which is how we operate. Uh, many states, including Colorado, extend this protection to food businesses too. So there is pretty widespread liability coverage for the food that's donated and going into the fridges. We can share, share, safely share produce, shelf stable items for those pantries and packaged cooked food, and all the cooked food must be labeled from producers with food safety certificates. So what you might find in a deli section of a grocery store would be appropriate as long as it's unopened, it has the expiration date, um, you know, sandwiches, whatever you might find that's pro properly packaged and unopened can go into the fridges. So we have these community guidelines. I've got some additional ones printed out if anyone wants to hold on to them for additional reference, but this is what is posted on our website. We share it with all our fridge users. Um, so it, it goes through kind of what you can and cannot put in the fridges, how we operate, 
no home prepared meals, no alcoholic beverages, unopened in the original packaging with expiration labels. If you could find it in a farmer's market or at a grocery store, it can go in the fridge. Um, and uh, and yeah, there's just kind of some I, I, suggestions on how people can interact with the fridges because they are kind of like little free libraries for food. Community members can access them. Donations can be made outside of our organization too. So we have plenty of those home growers who want to put in extra zucchini <laughs> this time of year. And we welcome them to do that because that's the type of food that can be found in a uh, farmer's market and it's totally food safe to go in there. So what does meaning, uh, being a host mean and what do we do? So a host site would provide some sort of accessible space for fridge, the fridge and pantry, uh, electrical outlet to power the fridge, and then if a camera is desired, if there's not already a camera on site, um, we Wi-Fi access so we can connect a Wi-Fi camera for security purposes. And then we provide everything else. That's it. That's all the, the host agreement is. We provide the fridge and the pantry. We bring weekly food um, at least once a week, usually, especially this time of year, multiple times a week we're delivering food. We also have separate volunteers that their only job is weekly to go and check on the fridges for cleanliness uh, and maintenance and looking at expiration dates or taking any like vegetables that maybe were in there too long, pulling them out. So they are going by multiple times a week just to maintain the cleanliness and health of the fridge. And if there's something off, like, oh, the vegetables in here look like they're freezing, then they will let us know and we'll do a maintenance check on it to make sure that it's functioning properly as well. Um, and so if, that, if there is an issue like that, we also provide the repairs as needed. Um, and then we will provide that Wi-Fi camera um, if desired for additional security. And we provide the website and the social media. And uh, our website has a landing page that has the map of where our fridge locations are. And if you click on an individual fridge site, it'll give you more information about where to access the fridge, anything else you need to know about that site. And it also has our community guidelines if people want to get more involved, all sorts of resources for folks about how our fridge program works. Um, we maintain the entire program after it's set up. Um, so it's really just having the site and then we do everything else. Um, and I would really, um, I know after hearing the, the, the last uh, discussion that it is not um, within the purview of this board to be you know, maybe suggesting this for the senior center. It's something that you would recommend stuff to council and then council direct staff. I would recommend if you were interested in food access in the senior community, one of your council recommendations could be, we want to reestablish the senior center as a hub for food, mm -hmm. free food access. That is a recommendation you can make and then council can direct staff to Reestablish it as a hub. And I say reestablish because we were doing programs with the senior center before 2020. And having more hubs that uh, remove the barriers to access that you might find at other organizations in the area, I think is really useful, especially seniors who might have limited mobility. Maybe coming to the senior center is their one trip of the day, it's coming in and getting other services here. They could get food at the same time and not have to make an extra stop or wait in a line or do something that would require additional paperwork. All the other types of barriers they might experience trying to get food services somewhere else. That's why I think that it is highly beneficial to have the senior center as a hub for food services if possible. And that's something that you wouldn't have to fund or do anything around, but just recommend to reestablish that. So that's my personal two cents on, on what the senior center could provide to the populations. Um, I am ready to open it up to discussion questions. I think that's all I had. I just wanted to go through what we do and what I think could be a benefit. That share table that we used to have here, I mean, that's something that it doesn't really require, require financial investment or anything. It's just allowing a table to be accessible where people go for food to. And one of the nice things, if you were also a hub that had a fridge, at the end of whenever that allotted time of having the food table out, like after two hours, you want to clear it off. Anything that's left could go directly into a fridge. So the food isn't just going to any excess food isn't going to waste. It's being refrigerated and then people can access it later. So it could actually work in tandem to have that kind of distribution table plus a fridge on the side. 
Fair kind of question. So for that distribution, the food table that you were just uh, referencing, um, who who manages that? Uh, meaning sets up, cleans up. All so so I joined the organization twenty twenty. So I don't know exactly who used to do it. I think what my what I think was it was a collaboration between. Longmont Food Rescue and Meals on Wheels. So we brought the food and helped set up the table, and then Meals on Wheels had been on site for the food service during, I think, the lunch period at that time. And so then when they cleaned up the lunch service, they cleared off the table of anything that was left and put into their fridges back there for their, you know, they would use it for whatever else they needed it for if it wasn't taken at the end of the day. So uh, that, that's a partnership in the past that's been happening today. Um, is there anything from your organization who manages that food to be able to to pick up excess you're saying or uh, uh, set up be on site I, I, I think definitely the setup and dropping off and then probably not on site throughout because it depends on the window too of what um of how long that share table would be open and whether it would be coinciding again with people getting meal services or something else here I, are you doing meal services right now um, just during the days I wanted to do it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think yeah, like I think this was on a Monday over lunch period as well right. like when we had been doing this previously. Um, and so we could, if you needed support after the end of service to clear off anything that's left and put it into refrigeration, we could be coming back on site. We just I don't think we'll be maintaining it throughout unless you needed someone to be maintaining it throughout. But again, it depends on the length of what that is. If it's two hours, unless we're directly handing out food. I don't know if it would be that's necessary to have. I mean, we, like we do the public food distributions where we do hand out food um, and are on site the whole time for the whole two hours. That is usually when we are pre packing food or having to monitor things differently. Um, so, I, my understanding is that the senior center used to not have that on site monitoring the entire time. But if it was part of the conversation that you would want someone on site monitoring, we could, we could do that. And so I was exploring so the option exists because again, those meals did their own thing. Yeah. We were talking about what exists at the senior center. Yes, they're in our facility, they're building, but they're, but they're their own organization. Right? Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, and I think we've worked in partnership with them before, <laughs> so we could talk about partnering again if it felt like that was a good thing to re explore, or if we were going to do our own program, we could discuss what that would look like too. I think, yeah, I think we would be willing if it was desired to have someone on site through a couple. Uh, lunch period to be at the table and stuff. We could probably provide that. It's just setting up that expectation for our volunteers. What kind of meal does it bring in a refrigerator in a place like this? I don't know that the pumps are. So, yeah, so we've had some discussions about the location of the at, uh, senior center. And if the desire is to have it indoors for safety and security reasons, I think we would be open to that. It would be our first indoor fridge, but as long as like I said, on our website, we have a little location finder, and within that location finder, we could list uh, that it's open during senior center hours and list out those hours so people know that it was inside. It's also where we list out in our information about how to access the fridge. So depending on if it was placed inside, where it's placed, we would have a little paragraph saying, when you enter the senior center, go to your left or whatever, so that people would know what, you know where to find it and aren't just blindly looking around the senior center for our fridge. Um, so I think, yeah, we would be open to placing one indoors for the senior center if that was desired. I think the conversation would be, it would be important to have a conversation about who can access it indoors. If, if it is an open community resource, can anyone come into the senior center and access it? Um, and when we do promotions, like, you know, like I said, we have a website and social media that promote things on, are we targeting a certain audience for the food? Obviously, we want to serve seniors. Does that mean that we post less frequently about the senior center fridge on our social media and instead provide flyers or materials to senior living facilities about the fridge and saying, well, you're, next time you're at the senior center, stop by the fridge is there. So that we're targeting the populations we want to serve. So I think there'd have to be a distinction between how we're marketing if we had this as a food hub and then who can access it. You know, for the share tables that set up with the lunch program, that's pretty much seniors are accessing it because they're accessing it when they're getting lunch. For the fridge, we would want it to be accessible to anyone. If if anyone, I mean, I'm allowed to walk in the door here at the senior center, no one's stopping me. So you might have people that aren't seniors coming in to use the fridge. 
the goal is that the majority of the people who are using it are receiving services here. I just wouldn't want to create a barrier to people who might come in to access it and say, oh, you can't use that fridge because you're a senior. That would be a discussion like we're not going to have someone monitoring who's using the fridge at all times, right? Like part of that is that people don't feel observed when they're using the fridge. They don't feel that there's stigma around it. Um, so we don't want to really have, have like a chicken to you, like, are you a senior? Use this fridge. Do you understand that, that kind of distinction? So I think that's one of the conversations that it's indoors. Can we still remove this stigma to accessing it indoors? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so our, our volunteers that come by twice a week, um, usually on a Monday and then either Thursday or Friday, they go to every single site. So again, yeah, our volunteers would be accessing it just to look for cleanliness, clean things out, um, any food. So I find that every couple of days is a good time to check in, wipe it down if there needs to be a wipeout, um, and taking out anything that is, is spoiled or, or is looking kind of old. Um, and then if when we're not having a check-in, say it was a Wednesday and we're not coming by until Thursday or Friday and someone accesses the fridge and is like, oh, there is something that needs to be addressed here. We have an um, Airtable form, an online form that anyone can fill up to give us feedback about the cleanliness, maintenance, levels of the fridge at any time that goes to us so we know if it needs an extra check. And we also have a policy that anyone who wants to contact us directly, obviously, our e my email contact information can be on hand, especially for senior center staff. It's like, I think you need to come in to monitor this fridge today and not tomorrow. We could be on call for that if necessary. We usually find on all our sites, you know, twice a week is plenty for keeping them clean. Yeah, uh, just out of curiosity, that you mentioned, what are you getting from me? How are you getting from me? So um, our funding model is a mix of grants, foundation, and individual donors, which is kind of common for all nonprofits. So it's a mix of those funding sources. Yeah, it's yeah. a great thing uh, that you're doing. Uh, but one other question I had with, with uh, you know, like the grocery store stuff like that, they donate. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they donate stuff that's about to expire. Mm -hmm. Is there any rule of the Oscars? What? How long is the plan be held? Yes, um, and that's why we have a check-in set as we do. So the um, the rule for uh, grocery stores and convenience stores, they, they donate things when the sell-by date comes up. So there's a sell-by date and use-by date, and most everything is packaged with a sell-by date these days because otherwise the grocery stores get confused. And so the use-by date is you put somewhere between three and five days after that sell-by date, and so that's why every three three to four days, we come by and check the fridges. And so if it's within the three-day window, we say, we go on the conservative side and say three-day window from the um, sell-by date is when we would, after three days, we would clear it out. Okay. But like, yeah, they say three to five days, and then some people say a week, because you know, if you bought it on Monday, you would want to basically use it on a Friday or a Saturday. But we do the three-day window just to be conservative for that. And I know you probably, you wouldn't have the information on this, but you know, big information there. We know if uh, a lot of homeless, if most homeless folks are taking advantage of this, do you have any idea about Taking advantage of it? You know, I mean, in a good way. In a good way. Okay, yeah. <laughs> in a good way. Yes. Um, uh, they're, that they're going through that and, and putting food and stuff. So um, we, as you mentioned, you know, we, we don't monitor right. the usage um, on the ground every day. We do have those security cameras, so if it's an issue, we can review the footage, but we're not monitoring these cameras 24 seven. It's only if we need to see if there's an issue with the, with the site. Um, and so all of our data on the fridge use is experiential and anecdotal, but almost every time I'm filling a fridge or cleaning a fridge, or I talk to other volunteers that do this work, there's always someone coming by and leaving. So we do have a good amount of kind of anecdotal evidence and I see a pretty even split um, with the, uh, at least the outdoor fridges. Um, it might be different if we had an indoor fridge between uh, individuals and families who seem like they're going to be bringing stuff back for food preparation to a home and unhoused folks who are coming by in bicycles and what they're looking for is often very different, right? Like the produce right now that we put in from the farms or anything that needs food prep is often you know, being utilized by the families. And then um, stuff that's grab and go, a lot of times this time of year when it's hot, we're putting extra drinks in the fridge too. 
Those are always very useful for our in-house populations. Uh, protein bars, uh, pop-top cans of uh, non-perishables, because a lot of them don't have a uh, can opener and are looking for things that are like this hearty meal in a can. So when we host food drives that we know are gonna go to our fridges and pantries, we'll have a list of most recommended foods or most requested foods um, for from our populations. And some of those are more requested from unhoused folks and some are more from you know individuals and families with households. Well, thank you to you and your volunteers. This is a great program. Mm -hmm. Thank you, John, for your volunteers. <laughs> I understand there's there's a lot of food available in the community. Mm -hmm. It's partially a problem of distribution. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what's your best guess as far as how many hungry people there are in the community, especially older adults? I don't have those numbers off the top uh, of my well, head. I'm just, I'm just asking for you know yeah. an estimate. Uh, I've heard. Um, I mean, it, in Colorado, I think it's estimated that a third of Coloradans are facing food insecurity. Oh my God. That was, I mean, that was a statistic, I think, from two years ago. Um, so that's the last time they did a full assessment. But that was post pandemic, you know, 2022, yeah. 2023 statistic. Was but there's lots of hungry people around. Yeah. And, um, and you know, there is a scale of food insecurity. There's folks who are actively hungry, and then there's folks who don't know where their next meal is going to come from. And then there's folks who are undernourished and are experiencing nutritional insecurity where they might be able to pad out a meal for a day or a week, but it might not be vitally sustaining because of the types of food that they can afford or, or, or um, have access to might be not nutritionally dense. And so it's also quality of food. And that's why we really focus on that part of our mission too, of trying to get the high nutrient food out of the community. Part of the work that um, Children, Youth, and Families has done um, is really uh, exploring where there are food deserts in the in the community, um, where it really is a barrier um, for individuals to get to um, the grocery store. Um, and so I know that <clears throat> on the east side where the youth center is located, that really has been identified as a food desert. Yeah. Um, does your organization kind of do some of that same research and kind of target where you want to put refrigerators based on that? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, part of it, we are there are areas we want to expand into, okay. um, and then part of it is where we've already had host relationships and who okay. has you know agreed to host a fridge. So you're gonna find someone in the right region to do that. But yeah, um, we do look at the food deserts. We're setting up a new program. And that's why the bulk of our two monthly open food distributions that we do, one is at the YMCA parking lot, okay. which is right by the youth center, and the other is at Collier Park. So both okay. are kind of in the same region that we know it has been identified as a food desert. So we know that that community could use extra access. We've also worked with mobile home communities before okay. and you know, looking at those, those areas that might not have a um, grocery store within a mile of walking distance. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? They're so interesting. Yeah. It's amazing what you do. Oh, thank you. It's nice to be there. I mean, it's nice to hear the complete picture, you know, see the complete picture and get all the information. Very helpful. Thank you. That was just excellent. Great, right, Donna. Appreciate uh, well, if anyone wants to follow up with me after this, um, I know that John has my contact information, and um, you can also just look up Longmont Food mm -hmm. Rescue. The contacts um, there goes to me. Um, do you have any other things yeah. you want to uh, discuss or questions? Yeah, you can have a card before you head out. That'd be great. It's really, really going to be a lot of fun. Can help with more about food security? Yes. All right. You can thank me, Naomi. Yeah. Thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you. Have a question? Yes. Okay. Naomi was to come here and do this. 
distribution of the housing. And a lot of you guys got involved going forward. You just thought right. mm -hmm. so yeah, that's, not a, that's not an issue in the program. No, it would be really Ronnie and it sounds like he's doing that now to make connection <laughs> to see, you know, how he would um he would or wouldn't operationalize that. And so I think, you know, it's bringing information, it's um you know, providing those those connections that that's totally that's totally appropriate, and he could decide. And I don't know what the conversation entails, but he could decide that that's something that um, you know he would want to uh, to do to do now. He wouldn't need to wait for council to get that direction because it wouldn't require um, any uh, any staff, um, you know, additional staff from the general fund. So yeah, and it sounds like. He, he, Looks like he's following up on that one. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, let me just kind of highlight based on what we talked about here what's happened. Believe it or not, we started this whole process in June. I'm, I'm aging as we do this project because it gets bigger and bigger. But just to give you a timeline of what's happened, we introduced it in June, June and July, early and July, the committee formed up with uh, Ann, Lonnie, and myself in a room. We started mapping out strategy to hang with, to get an idea of what the issues were. What, what is food insecurity? How does it affect people in the long run? Um, July and August, we met separately and began to interview local food support organizations to find out what was being done. Because the first pass that we made, we recognized that on a national level, there was recognition of food insecurity. We got the federal government funds, a lot of things, Eating America, what have you. Regionally, there was activity going on through people like food, you know, community food share. And there's a recognition in Longmont that, that, that you know, the growing senior population talked about transportation, talked about all the things they talked about, not about food, which surprised me. But then when I talked to Katie Weiser and other people, you see, food insecurity doesn't get talked about because people are embarrassed. They're embarrassed to talk about that they can't put food on the table. So that keeps them a, kind of a hidden, a hidden problem. They hidden hungry, I think, and, and um, we talked with people. So in August, we began facility uh, visits, meals, meals on Wheels, the Otter Center, Food Rescue, Walmart Housing Authority, Community Food Share. We also met with various uh, city staff to get an idea of what available community resources we had. A number of you were at the presentation that Lindsay Neville did in August on the area of area agency on aging. It was one of the 56 slides talking about all the things that they do. It was one slide that talked about food insecurity. That specifically said that in 2020, 2018, 36% of the people contacted felt that food availability was poor, fair to poor. Three years later, that number, six years later, that number was 44%. It's a growing, it's a growing issue. What we're talking about last month, the average cost of in Boulder County. 2018 was up 28 percent, 18 percent higher than the rest of Colorado, at 37 percent. Cost of meals in Boulder, 37 percent higher than anywhere else in the country. We are fortunate to a lot of areas. Food insecurity is one um, We made some contacts at the uh, El Comité's Food Health Fair. We also followed up on the Intercombio. We talked to the Latino community and in the Comedios case with those who are not other non English speakers. There's a desire to do more outreach, but then the focus is not there yet. Um, we also met with uh, Ronnie and, and Alain and myself met with uh, Carmen Ramirez. She's a neighborhood resource specialist, Guillermo Estrada, to find out what information they have on a community wide basis. It was interesting, they, they volunteered to give us a map to my ward to show, and in that ward map, to show age, uh, financial resources, and people who are using or accessing food, accessing food through a uh, SNAP program and what have you, that they can identify by ward where the issues are. So they gave us a number of areas. So if you want to make an impact quickly, here's 500 units. That we can help you access. You can ask your question on food insecurity. After that, things, to, the thing, the, the issues that um, Christina mentioned, we sort of began to uh, what's it called? mission creep. 
Ah. Mission Creek, where, where it was perceived by one of the organizations that we were somehow infringing on an area that we had a food pantry here, which is never the case. But it raised the issue with the advisory board carrying the group's program, which became very clear we couldn't do that. However, in that same meeting, there was a shift that came and met with uh, Harley and I met with Ronnie and with Jeff. And again, you can't do program, that's not the advisory board's role. However, they asked us to step back, twist a little bit, take a look at this. And what they suggested, rather than having a food hub here that, that may have limited quantifiable results, they suggested that uh, Jeff in particular, that we instead create a presentation and a proposal to the city manager. And Jeff felt, and Ronnie supported that, that by doing that, we could get a clearer picture of what the city would like to hear and what might be taken to council in, in the future. And the opportunity that created for the advisory board, if successful, would significantly enhance the support presentation for council in 2025. And Jeff also and I offered to help in putting that presentation together and accompanying us to make that, that presentation. It became clear early on is that the national food insecurity is, is a big deal. People are dealing with it. Regionally a big deal. Longly, long, locally, there is, it's supported by a number of food, food support organizations, but it's not supported by the city. Transportation is, housing is, whatever. Those are all great programs. But if you ask people what four basic needs, food's always number one or two, and it's just not something people talked about. I think we can bring some focus um, to what we've done to do here. I think what's going to require, yes, there's a lot of work. It's also going to require more participation in part of this is the advisory board with direction from staff to go over a step with boundaries. So at some point we're going to ask help to help us interview and do things like that as we become clear on how to put the presentation together for the city manager. And that brings you up to the last three months that feels like a year out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a program that, that the committee's had, Ronnie, Kareem, and Anna have really helped with and their, their enthusiasm is Really be wonderful, but we're going to come back and ask for other people to participate. Be aware. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions, comments? Yeah, thank you. You've done a great job with this, John. Yes, you really has delved into it and you know really reached out to a lot of places and covered things. You know, the more you reached out, the more you signed up to speak to somebody That's else, and you did it. So. Kudos to you. You really followed this through and really worked hard on it. I've had a lot, I've had a lot of help. And it, it, the meeting with Jeff and Ronnie was really in line with Christine was saying you can't do program. You can't do, there's got to be a way to do this. And the suggestion was present the city manager, get, get his input, and see what see where it goes from there. What would you do with city manager from you know, anytime? I have no idea of how much information I've presented at this point. I know there's a bit, we will not lack for information, but I know he's a busy man. I don't want him to take up a lot of the time. So we'll see. I'll, I'll talk with you. Yeah, you probably have to be after the work. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm hoping in my lifetime I can get this done. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Because of budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we, have a, we have a lot to gather. And, yeah, so is that format? What, what, do you, what do you say, or what are you recommending as our next steps, or your next steps? Well, I'd like the community and I to, to talk further about that and then go to Ronnie, Jeff, and Christine and say, okay, tell us, give us some ideas how to take this information and make it understandable and quickly. So I would, I would see, we'll see by next meeting what, what's, what's come up, how we done that. Okay, so. That'll be a brief, a brief presentation at that point. Uh huh. As to, okay. So we're talking about a, a draft presentation to the city manager at next no, 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 we're talking about gathering the information to get some idea of the information. Yeah. Okay. Length and breadth and width of what we want to talk about and talk to senior staff about how to make that work. So just I think the next thing we can talk about how the process is going. Okay. How that's unfolding. Because we have no idea at this point. It was a, it was just brought up a week ago to refocus. Okay. And that puts the 
clearly it puts the food hub on hold here unless Naomi does something. Does does Harold get uh, proposals like that quite a bit? I mean, is this um, this going to be impactful? I guess that's what I'm trying to ask. Well, I think anytime he can hear about kind of what is going on in the community is is helpful he's very involved in you know lots of um different you know different areas as far as you know moving things forward i'm trying to think in the past um you know it wasn't it was before harold but we did do a presentation um to our previous city manager on um on gang involvement for example um, as it was something that was emerging, um, you know, this was in the what is it, 20 years ago, um, yeah, early 2000s, we did do a presentation to board and our city manager at that point to say this is what we're seeing, this is, you know, these are the areas of concern, um, this is how we think that we should work with um, our public safety department, this is how we should act on the issue, um, and it really came, you know, uh, from input that we got from the community, from the, the school district, um, from, uh, from you know our partners in the in the school district, our partners you know just across the community to say you know this is this is what's going on. Well, I mean you you were there with Jeff. What did you feel? I I thought he was pretty enthusiastic. You both seemed enthusiastic about putting something like that together for Harold. Mm -hmm. As far as so being able to help support with that, yeah, mm -hmm. being able to have a direction where we want to go, could we help support the same logistical pieces, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, accessing the PowerPoint, putting that information into the mm -hmm. slides, um, that support can be available. I think, you know, there's the opportunity to do that, and there's the opportunity, the standing meeting that you all have with him yearly, um, where you talk about emerging issues or your areas of focus, and maybe you want to consider having this be a big a big part of that um uh, and i think you were going to maybe meet with him in february or march if i remember right that would give you some time to to get that together just february march <laughs> this coming february march okay. yeah that's what it was. Or, i mean <laughs> but it could be it could be that you want to do it after budget right. november december it would also be is there any advice that you would give um, John and, and others that work on it? You know, know knowing Harold as little as I do, he seems to be a very data-oriented guy. So the more th you can reduce things to quantifiable mm -hmm. and numbers and whatever, mm -hmm. probably the better off mm -hmm. you are. But it might be a little difficult, I don't know. But, mm -hmm. um, specific versus general, and I don't know, do you have any advice for that sort of you know, I think looking at a couple of different things. So, you know, um, homelessness uh, or unhoused issue is is huge. Um, getting people into housing is 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 huge. That's a that's a big area of focus. Supporting people in in permanent supportive housing, um, whether it's with um, you know mental health resources or other resources. Um, I think is, is huge for him. And so I think it's about painting that picture of the data, you know, um, uh, community-wide, um, looking at, you know, as um, Naomi talked about, you know, what areas of the city are within a, a mile of, um, of uh, walking distance, um, and then making potentially some recommendations about, you know, we have this permanent supportive housing um, uh, uh, development that, you know, and this is just an example that is two miles within walking distance of a, of a grocery store, we might recommend with the city have a partnership um, with, uh, with uh, Mama Food Rescue or, you know, whatever that looks like, more outreach for Meals on Wheels. Like, he can't direct what Meals on Wheels um, um, does, but what he can say is, um, you know, while not housing authority might want to consider um, partnership, for example. Yeah, that was one of the things we met with community resource, community neighborhood resource group is that they have these maps that show exactly that. Uh -huh. Here's some here's concentrations of people who are food insecure because of the snap that we know they have snap benefits. Yeah. 
So that's just coming to the part of this has been telling things against some right. and finding information right. on what to pursue, and that came up a week and a half. Then you could overlay where the grocery stores are on that on that same map. You know, put you know where where Walmart is, where Safeway is, where King Supers is, and then start to start to to do that. What we found when we did this research through children, youth, and families is that many families were getting um, meals from 7-Eleven. So you know the canned goods, the um, they have some, you know, little bit of fruits and veggies, but that really was if they had a, a, a barrier to transportation, um, and uh, um, and uh, you know barrier to uh, um, yeah, just getting to a grocery store. That really was what what the option was, and so what were some ways that that we could do that? So having a community food share. Yay. Um, those were kind of some of the things that were operationalized. It's been really helpful all along. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anybody respond so quick to a request for information because it gets, it gets home before I get home. Thank you. Yeah. It helps that, you know, my previous job, we really did look at this um, the security issue for, for families and their children. Well, it's interesting to me to see how much was put on hold with COVID. Yeah. And, how and now it's resurfacing. Just slowly started to be yeah. so much other stuff. Yeah. And also some older programs like, I didn't realize there'd been a food yeah. help here. We need to know, so, yeah, things just got paralyzed for a while. And I think that's kind of what, what we're seeing at the youth center as well, is that there really was a, a, a slump in, in attendance. And uh, it took a little while to get out of that. And now we're at that place, you know, pre-COVID, um, with numbers that are even higher because people are in money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's it for me. That's it for you. I'll try to. No, John, you, you really opened up a great area. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have no idea. Well, me, <laughs> now we know. <laughs> would, you, would you do it again if you knew that? No, I would actually because it's, it's such a basic need. Yeah. yeah, it is. That's the thing that's I don't think, I think it's just, I think it's great that we're working on it. Well, I appreciate the support of the advisory council and getting clear what that role means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been helpful for all of us. I think all of us had to kind of think a little bit. So I know, this is for sure. Okay. Let's move on to uh, updates as far as transportation. Arlene, do you have anything today? No, just I didn't know if anybody had any questions. Uh, you've all got a copy of this, so um, <coughs> okay. uh, all right. So no update there. Housing. Do you have any transportation? Uh, um, any updates on housing, money? Not other than just the report I put out. Um, there is something in the report about a meeting. So if you're interested at all about Attainable housing as opposed to just affordable housing. There is a meeting going on um, in the city um, at the heart of Walmart uh, Church. So if you want to read about that, if that is of any interest to anybody. Um, other than that, there's really no big issues in housing. I'm just uh, <clears throat> I'm just thinking forward to uh, you know, uh, March or April when we make our presentation to the uh, city council. Um, you know, I, you know, whatever's new is fine, but I think certainly, if nothing else, we can just re-emphasize the kind of stuff that was covered before. Sure, we don't want to forget about it. Yeah. We don't want to move on to other things, right. but right. that's why I think Arlene and I are just keeping people up on what's going on. Yeah, and you both are doing a good job. I, I also. I read your reports very carefully. <clears throat> okay, new business, email communication. Lonnie, you uh, wanted to have some clarification on that. Yeah, um, we were running into a lot of problems when we were meeting about the food question um, <clears throat> because it was always, you know, how do we do this? How do we talk to each other and not break the rule about, about um, Meeting. meetings? Mm -hmm. So I did see and I'll ask you, Christina, I asked, I sent you an email once and you said, I'm going to reply to Ronnie too. Yeah. I'm going to add Ronnie onto the thing. Did that break the rule of three? No, because he's staff. Okay. Yeah. 
So how does it work? Just within this advisory, advisory Yeah, group? and I'm going to get some clarification from um, um, our uh, our uh, city clerk um, just to make sure that I haven't that I have the right information because that's what we do with our human services advisory board. We don't email the whole whole group. Um, all of the all of the meetings have to be posted. Um, there's just a, a process to that. So let me just make sure that we're doing that right, um, and then I can report. Um, uh, you know, send uh, Ronnie and Dave an email to say, you know, this is what I this is what I learned. But okay. that's what I understand. But let me just make sure that I'm right. Okay, great. So two or more people on the or more than two people on the advisory board is considered a meeting. Cannot email each other. Cannot yeah. get together and talk to each other. Two or, more, two or more is considered yeah. a meeting. Even though you're just sending out information, that would still be Yeah, it's all public. Yeah, it all, oh. and that really is for transparency's sake, um, so that the community is aware of uh, all of the business of the, the city. It's it's um, the same with uh, city council members. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if a mayor comes to an event, if the mayor comes to an event at the senior center, that's fine. Um, if uh, the mayor and three other members come to the senior center for an event, we have to post that um, so that people know that their public officials um, are gathering at, uh, at an event. So even, say, two members of the advisory board were speaking to the liaison? The senior that considered... service? Who, which liaison? The uh, city council. Um... I would think so because technically they're a liaison in the advisory board. But mm -hmm. let me let me double check. All right, that's another. We just um, Sheila and I walked out one night um, or one day talking to Marsha. Yeah. And it was like, oh wait, don't say anything about the meeting. Yeah, you know, yeah. Marsha, Marsha told you that. Yep, mm -hmm. yep. So yeah, she would know that forwards and backwards as a as a public official. So I would say, yeah, that's correct. Okay. No official business. So staff don't count. No, no. So yeah, because it's our job. Uh, yeah, you can meet with all of us. Work. No, no, I know. <laughs> you can meet with, I could, you know, you could email me and I could copy Ronnie and his whole team. Um, because it's, it's yeah, we're staff and that's the... I've got a question on committees. Now, we, we've been avoiding committees, but if we wanted a committee, and I can see a couple of areas where next year we might want to form a couple of committees. Mm -hmm. So, there, we, we, anybody can suggest a committee but uh -huh. we, we would approve a committee in general right. mm -hmm. but, okay but then there would be is there a 48 hour posting requirement for any meeting is it 20 24 24 and you do that and so what i look for in that uh if, if we if we have two or more people who need to meet i do request more than 24 hours hours because okay. the, the logistics that go into planning and coordinating that yeah um we have to um, we have to identify space available, right? So we have to get the so information. The public come to that. Identify space available because it's an open meeting now. So we need to make sure we have adequate space. I need to look at those details because it's a public meeting. I'm assuming that we need to go to one and off of public media to have it recorded. Um, again, this meeting recorded is a public meeting, right? And um, so there's a lot of communication and finding space space available here at the senior center. We're doing long on public media to have have this meeting recorded and then time to create that communication that needs to be posted at least 24 hours in advance. So on paper it's 24 hours in advance, but it takes us more than 24 right. hours sure. to right. get all of that information together. So what I mean by that is if we want to meet, um, and let's say it's Tuesday, give us a little bit more time to say hey, with not <coughs> trying to avoid those quick turnarounds. Instead of if it's a Tuesday, say we need to meet Wednesday. Friday or the next week would probably give us the time we need to make those connections and pieces together. You do that then? That would be. You set up, you set it up. I would That's work with Beyond. You, you do the notice, uh, notice requirements and all that. Right, just the same as we do as posting our board agenda to the public. Okay, and a staff mm -hmm. member has to be there. Yes. You, uh, typically, you would be the person right. that would be there. Right. And so I'd work with Beyond Get Together to get that uh, notice uploaded. So it's, it's, it's visible to the public, and um, and then you know, it's not that. We may want to do that. I don't know. I'm just trying to be clear. Yeah. 
Yes. Which is why we pretty much kept to two people. Yeah. It's a pain. It's a lot to build. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's a pain for you too. I mean, for yeah. everybody. <laughs> but I understand the transparency. Yeah. Okay. And I just sent okay. a quick yes. message to our city clerk. So, probably we'll get back to you. Okay. Anything further on that? Did you get your questions answered, Bonnie? Uh, yes, I did. Thank okay. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next item then would be outreach. Uh, we lumped that uh, the, the uh, day of the dead and the, uh, what was it? The Y Fiesta event. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a couple of events coming up, and especially since we're really trying hard to reach out to the Spanish speaking community, I'm curious as to whether we can be involved in these things. We can do a show, you know, we could just do <clears throat> there to hand out literature. So the first one is the Day of the Dead. I understand that's an event put on by the museum. Would there be any way we could ask the museum if we could have just a table there to hand out literature about the senior center? Does that go together at all, or does it conflict? I think that might be a conflict because I don't think they have resource tables. It's not like a Cinco de Mayo event. Okay. Um, it really is. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so, mm -hmm. yeah, they don't have um, uh, the way that uh, other city departments are involved are more again in the programmatic aspect. So they have like people from the um, youth center, staff from the youth center they've had in the past um, helping uh, kids make sugar skulls. Or, um, but, but they really didn't take any information about the, the youth center. Okay. Um, it would be similar to like a, um, maybe a movie or a dance that you would have here, um, that it really is a, a, a specific program. And so okay. uh, with that same example, the CEP event that we're holding here, like we've identified in our go, we've uh, communicated that to the public. Um, we get 80 plus people to that, and if recreation um, or library or any of the other department reaches out, hey, can I set up in, uh, in your lobby? That's people coming through, and that's almost like that conflict stuff that we're talking about. All right. Could we, during regular business hours, have that opportunity at table? As you see, we have one set out in our lobby. Right. That's that's di that's a different conversation. Right. Right. And and kind and of so, part of what you know is done here. Right, mm -hmm. right. What you make and so what we want to avoid is that programmatic piece that Christina was talking about, reaching out to us if we can almost, you know, um, 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 involve ourselves in their program. We want to be mm -hmm. careful with that too. When there is an opportunity where they are setting up event tables, they reach out to the whole, to all the departments to say, like single to mile. Uh, you know, there's if, if you're interested in setting up setting up a table. Um, there's a process for that, right? We communicate that out, let it know that um, senior services wants to have a table and they assign us a location. So there, there are two different events with two different intents. So we just want to make sure. But it just seemed like such a perfect opportunity to reach out to, you know. Plus, yeah. there's still that opportunity, yeah. like Christina had mentioned, you know, that volunteer piece, right? Instead yeah. of, uh, collecting with the board, setting up the tables, or an opportunity for an individual from the board member to say, I want to volunteer, walk around, and hand out material um, if anybody's interested in tablets, things like that. So, yeah, and we've had um, through the years, for example, big family events um, in children with their families, and we've had requests from, for example, public health. Can we come in and do a survey? Um, or um, can we do outreach at that event? Because it does seem like a really good opportunity, um, but it really conflicted with um, the the goal and the effort that the team had um, in really focusing on that that specific program for the division. And um, you, you do that with one organization, and then it just opens it up to, um, yeah, kind of opening a can of worms, and, and then it becomes a resource there. Well, let me lead into the second event. Um, it's called the Y Fiesta event. It's at the YMCA. Here's what I was given as a description. The Y Fiesta is a community event to recognize and celebrate the many contributions, diverse cultures, and extensive history of our ancestors. 
from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, Central and South America. He invited the community to come to the Longmont YMCA to enjoy food, games, entertainment, and visit booths from businesses in our community, such as Good Life Rescue, Amistad, I'm not familiar with what that is, bilingual healthcare specialists, a way forward, recovering cafe, to name a few. During the event, you will have this, there will be a mariachi band uh, from Skyline High School, dancers from, I'm going to be crucified as Valis Demetera. Valis Demetera. Valis and And the Y Zumba class. I got that one. Yeah. Um, and entertainment from our YMCA preschool classes. Um, it's a free event. We could get a table, we could get a booth, um, and they are free. So, what does that fall under? Is that something we might? Yeah. Again, I think I think for me, and, and I could be wrong, so please correct me. Um, I think it really is about that programmatic aspect of staff giving. Um, you know, these are this is the offerings that we have um, at the senior center. So similar to Cinco de Mayo, is it staff and uh, and uh, you know advisory board member or other members you know partnering to do that. I think the question that Ronnie probably would ask is, is that within our demographic? Um, and and would it, you know, what's the return on investment as far as, you know, having a table there and using staff hours to do that um, specific I event? Is it targeted toward, toward children? or And I don't know enough about that versus like a single the mile when it's a community-wide event with 10,000 people. Um, and so those, those were the questions that I would ask. Art, do you have an opinion on that? Well, one of the biggest concerns I have about some of these activities is that there really are family family events. Mm -hmm. Celebrations. And, yeah, and I, I, I just feel uncom <coughs> uncomfortable taking parents away from their children. And because at this time, you know, I really think that the families, the parents, the kids, you know, it, it's, it, how do I want to say it, are very united together. They, they do everything together. And taking them from that, I wouldn't feel real comfortable. But I think we have the mariachi, so then we have to have a people and folking in the music mm -hmm. and another people. So, like, um, they will have a presentation for the kids. So, it's, I think it will be. I don't think it will be um, productive for mm -hmm. us. I'm sorry, what, what was that last sentence? I mean, productive. Yeah. Productive? Yeah. So it's like when we went to the, the, the feria, we have only um, four people who wrote to sign up. And uh, we were the whole day. Mm -hmm. So it was, a, it was a, a beautiful dance with a lot of people there. But it wasn't enough people. It wasn't enough so that people were so empty. In the, well, and that room was so empty, I don't know, mm -hmm. in the morning. Um, but uh, whatever uh, people who speak Spanish, they come close. I talked to them about the senior center. So if they have families, so like the parents or families who will be interested in coming to the senior center, I give them information. But I couldn't. Um, uh, uh, to a uh, chip to write down, and I, we get on four, four mm -hmm. people. And the whole day. So, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, what I'm doing is the place that I live, so I start visiting my neighbors and giving them information first. Mm -hmm. And I think it yeah. is working better yeah. because yeah. I start calling me or calling here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's more, it will be, it's working more for, for us. Yeah. So, going to the people that I know. They have parents, or they have maybe parents there, mm -hmm. and maybe, you know, we are still doing that. Mm -hmm. And I envision um, that same example of the YMCA opportunity uh, almost mirroring it. It's not a targeted demographic, so the interest isn't really, it could not be there, right? And not only that, uh, I heard Violet's listed on there. So they're, going, they're, they're a senior center group um, who gave the space here to practice. They're practicing, they perform in the community, um, but they're not sponsored by the senior center, right? Yeah. We gave them the space to perform their practice so they can go do that work in the community. They're going on their own, 
Right, they're going on their own on behalf of their own group, not on behalf of the senior center. Right. But you know, my my assumption is they're going to bring awareness uh, to, the, right, to what they do. This this opportunity exists, and almost try to recruit for their program, not on behalf of the senior center, but recruit for their program. Mm -hmm. And so, on Mount Wheels on Wheels Land, somewhere exactly. to recruit volunteers. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So, appreciate that. You know, I mean, I think it's a good thing to bring up here. Well, there's just one more, so you can tell me what you think of this. Mm -hmm. um, area del Tamal. Oh, <laughs> it's run by the the Chino Chamber of Commerce. Most of Commerce. Do you know anything about that? Mm -hmm. I know something about it. I know anything. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. It's not going to be, I think, something that we're really involved in. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a um, variety of vendors. There's going to be uh, luchador dressing, mm -hmm. bands. Uh, cool. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be fun. Yeah. And I do intend to go. But I, I just don't think mm -hmm. it's the kind of attention that mm -hmm. people want to have. Okay. I'm wondering if there's like, you know, maybe if this group has a conversation, you know, for the following year, what some of those, in conjunction with the senior center staff, you know, what some of those um, uh, opportunities in the community are, you know, bigger, bigger ones, the, you know, Cinco de Mayo, which I know you always, the senior center always does. And then um, we just like a week ago, two weeks ago, um, had unity in the community um, that's put on by uh, uh, the chamber, chamber as well. Um, that might be a good opportunity to um, for the the staff to you know depending on 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 if it's you know um, you have the resources to do that um, hand out information about the senior center um, and or if you all have um, uh, vacancies on your board you could also look at look at using that avenue to get the word out. And what I've been thinking, so maybe I need to switch the way I think about this. What I've been thinking is, is that the advisory board could be a backup to the staff of the organization of the, of the center so that when they do outreach events, we could pop in as volunteers and give mm -hmm. the give the staff a break so they don't have to go to these things on weekends or anything like that. You know, we could just be considered another um, group of people who could man a booth and give out literature and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So in light of that, I've been looking at things that I get on, on my feeds and stuff and saying, oh, could we do that? Could we do that? Now you've clarified a little more how I should hone in on what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah. And if it's more of a community event, an informational <clears throat> event, or if it's more of a festivities. And right. The festivities. If, it's, if there's a resource fair attached, then I right. think it's a conversation, you know, first and foremost with Lonnie to say, you know, what is the what is the plan? Um, you know, what's the bigger senior center plan as far as outreach? And you know, I know he's pulling some things together based on on the, the um, you know, goals that we identified and, and uh, you know, does that fit within the, within the plan. Um, and I did hear back on another note uh, um, from the, the city clerk's office and I'm happy to get that information on this. Um, yeah, so I just want to clarify, all I was really thinking was to be supportive of, you know, our group is active now. We have an active board, so I'd like, yeah. if you need help with outreach, I think that's something we're all very interested in. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I was coming from when I was looking at these events and, and bringing them up as, as options. So. Great. And a lot of ways, depending on the, the, the focus and attention of the event taking place, um, you know, a lot of them will reach out and ask if we're interested in, in setting up a booth, right? If it, it, if it meets it meets our need to support the our, our specific demographic and it makes sense then absolutely we will jump in on those opportunities but always bring them. i think that's okay still Lana, to bring those absolutely. recommendations like hey uh, just want to see if, if we've heard about this event it allows them this open conversation to um, say oh here yep they reached out to me and it didn't make sense or nope we haven't heard okay you know are we interested in 
um, having somebody individually hand out pamphlets um, or just even looking at it a little bit more mm -hmm. and, and, and getting that input that was that was great to hear from everybody to say mm -hmm. you know you know hear their thoughts as to why or why not it might be a good idea and I think you know I, I especially appreciate the effort to really make not only this board more diverse in representation but also the senior center um, more diverse I think that that's something that um, that really um, has been definitely something that that, that I've noticed and, and I'm really um, pleased with you know how the staff is doing that that outreach the the involvement and the um, you know the desire of the board to help with that I think speaks volumes to kind of where the, the senior center is, is headed um, because you know years ago uh, senior center looked really different um, not very diverse at all and so it's, it's, it's great that you have that as a focus. I appreciate that. And I just want to mention to the health fair that we did, Maria really stepped up. I mean, she was in her element at that health fair. <laughs> she was bebopping around and talking to everybody. I said, We have another art. Yeah. 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 Go pick so, your exactly. yeah. educators. But she did such a good job. She had everything set up. She brought her kids to help out. And really, I mean, I personally, I said to her, you know, you're kind of quiet in the meetings and I don't really know you too well or anything. But seeing her at that event, whew, I was just <laughs> like, you can come work with me or I'll work with you uh, anytime. You were right. on it, you knew what you were doing. And I just want to say for Maria, for Art, for John, for Dave, for Eric, myself, and we all, almost everybody was there. Right. And it was fun. You got a chance to chat with people yeah. and kind of get us to know them a little better. Yeah. Well, hopefully out. next year it will be bigger. It would have been a lot better if we could also okay. work more, but it was just yeah. nice to get to know each other and sit and chat. It was challenging, especially when we have to be. <laughs> We became yeah. the tent. Yeah, right. You know, I tell my son, uh, they started that we, and I said, my son, I think it's time to start putting the things in the car. So we get the, the books and everything, my son and I, and put them in the car. And then when we come back, so the wind was bad. Oh, so they, they threw some of the tents. <gasps> it's like quarter to three. three. I was coming back at three to pick up everything. <laughs> quarter to three, the wind just. Yeah, we just put it, well, not me, <laughs> they just... Yeah, Eric and I were hanging one <laughs> night at the <laughs> visit. Took off with them, huh? The three of us was there. And then we just went down and then it started raining and everything. Oh, so my just goodness. In it just did. <laughs> and, and beforehand, we had put up the tent, and so other people saw that, so we became the tent. <laughs> for other people. Like, hey, can you help us over here? Okay, I'll get you over here. Eric will get you over here. We'll get, we'll My son has one. That's great. Yeah. He's a young boy, so he has one. That's great. All right, enough of this right. frivolity. Let's <laughs> move uh, okay. on to uh, the manager's report. Oh, yeah, yeah. City clerk's in yeah. sorry. The city clerk did respond. I'll take more of Ronnie's time, unless you want to go over this. Okay. okay. Um, so the city clerk did respond about um, about meetings and emails. Um, so technically, the rule is three or more, um, but uh, they advise to not do it. Period, and, and that really is in in the effort to, for transparency around government operations. And so uh, our city city clerk says we advise that you not do this. Um, from and then from the Colorado Municipal League, whenever um, the law guy. Whenever there are three or more members, and I sent this to Bianca to put in the notes, whenever there are three or more members um, or a quorum of members, if there's fewer than three, um, of this local public body get together and public business is discussed a, or formal action can be taken, the gathering is a meeting. Um, and the municipal league directs it shall be open to the public. And so that really is the reason behind posting meetings, that if there are, you know, Three or more, it's a local public body and uh, public invited to be heard can come in and, and speak. Um, then as far as uh, uh, regarding email messages, meetings conducted by telephone, electronically, or by other means of communication um, provide ver various methods for public officials to confer. Um, that includes conference calls and other non-traditional forums like Zoom and, and Teams meetings. 
Um, uh, it is uh, under the statutory definition of a meeting. And in, in adding electronic communications to the statute, the General Assembly noted um, unique circumstances that the use of email and the like create and the need to balance privacy interests of public officials with public interests in open governance. Um, it ex now it explicitly subjects the email communication of elected officials um, that discuss pending legislation or other public business to the statutory requirements. So it, it to me that does um, say that it is, you know, you're talking about food insecurity and maybe making recommendations to council. And so if three or more of you are on that email chain, it's it's public and the, and the city um, clerk uh, advises to not do that. So across the board, no exceptions. Just three or more people get together. It's just not, it's considered a meeting. It's a considered a meeting needs to be posted and people need to have the opportunity to come in and be heard. So what you said before stands. Okay. Thank you. But then it said two, if there's two um, and business is being discussed, that's also considered a meeting, right? So. I think that's where the two or more comes right, from. If, right. if you're if you're meeting with somebody to discuss business, then. But I think you you're headed down the right direction, um, David. If you're going to have committees, standing committees, then like make that part of you know maybe you have your committees that happen after this meeting or like I think there's sure. lots of options. I think maybe that's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. We can talk about that. All right, moving on to the manager's report. All right, due to time. Yeah, we got 15 minutes. Yeah, I'll be quick. Due to time, yeah, my board report. Um, one thing that I really, manager's report, one thing I really want to hit on is the work we are doing um, starting starting this week. I am working with Utility Building, uh, to provide some on-site support here at the Senior Center to help individuals, seniors specifically, but anybody in our community who needs help setting up their uh, utility building portal on the new website. So what we have done is uh, identify dates and times, and I didn't have those, otherwise I would put them in the board meeting, uh, but I will pull them up now. We've identified over the next three weeks, two days each week, um, for two hours each of those days, that we will be in on-site support. Utility building staff, up to three staff members will be on, on site here at the Senior Center. While we have worked with our SETC group to have three or four volunteers on site as well. And so, what we're going to do is, again, on these identified dates and times, be in a drop in location to receive that support. Um, individuals will, from our community will not need to bring a device. Uh, our SETC staff and utility building staff will have devices on site to walk them through that registration process to set up their, uh, their portal. Um, those dates, and I could send them out an email after this, but I'll just share them here now. Thursday, September 5th from 3 to 5 p.m. Friday, September 6th, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Tuesday, September 10th, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Thursday, September 12th, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. And Tuesday, September 17th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And Wednesday, September 18th, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And so this is for individuals who have had trouble seeking that support who have had trouble um, setting up their new utility billing portal because they don't have access to a computer device or um, they just don't know how to navigate the website to, uh, to, to, to complete the registration process. So again, our SETC group is being trained today uh, by utility billing so we can start providing that support tomorrow. So a lot happened very quickly. And so in that process, utility billing, two months, right? We'll not be assessing late fees for the next two months, allowing everybody that time to um, set up that, that portal. So uh, we've, 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 we've learned that there are some barriers that exist, so that's why we've made these adjustments to provide the support here at the Senior Center. So I just want to share that information with you so you're aware that if you have heard it, we are aware we made those adjustments and uh, have identified the support um, to be put in place here. So that's all I have. And do you have notices up, you know, to let people know what the dates are? And stuff? So we just got this all underway. I sent an email last night uh, at the end of the day to our staff. Um, as soon as this meeting concludes, I'll start working on that. But I did work, I did let our comms team, or I'm sorry, 
enough for this plan to work to I don't get this out. I let you know we're, we're we're not running it. We're a support site and location, right. but I did make that recommendation that um, that person in charge needs to communicate with our comms team to get that word out in the community of these dates and times and get rid of the senior center. So what are we in control of though? Right, uh, posting that in our in our building. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, City Council liaison. Area agency on um, aging. Um, there's really nothing more to report, just the fact that Lindsay did come and do the presentation. If anybody has any questions about it or if anybody needs the link on how to look it up and things, just let me know. I think I put it in the report, but I'm not positive. We do. I am um, good. I um I was stuck down in the south. I was there the day that they had the accident on the highway where they you know, we were down on Roots or 90, what is the name I trying to say? 70, where oh, they lost all the, all the piping on the highway oh, and everything. And that's where I was, so I didn't get back. It would have been a real tight move to get back after my doctor's appointment. I blew it completely, so I wasn't able to make it. But other than that, um, nothing else to report. If anybody has any questions, just let me know. But your reports have been very good okay. and, and uh, very informative. Um, okay, trends. Um, I had uh, a meeting with Chuck the other day, and uh, John, you can help me out here. If you want to. Uh, he was talking about we were just trying to coordinate, share information is probably a better word. Uh, I was really interested in the strategic planning effort that the Friends is engaged in. And Chuck was telling me, and this is preliminary, uh, and so that's the way I'm going to present it today. It's just preliminary, but what he's got in mind, what the strategic planning committee has in mind, that there be developed a long range plan that on the part of the senior center. A five-year plan, probably, is what he said. Where you know you, you plan out your activities, your goals, your priorities, all that kind of stuff for the next five years. And the people involved in that planning, the <coughs> friends group, I guess, the strategic planning committee, uh, the senior center staff, and uh, the board. And over a period of time, and Chuck said something like, "This will probably take months," and I'm sure he's right. It'll take months to, to you know, we, it's not even formed totally yet, but it'll take, it'll take a while to do this strategic plan. And the idea behind it, I think, uh, correct me if I'm quoting this wrong, but I think the idea is the, the friends group is more than happy and are ready to help with funding on certain programs or services. That, that's not the question. They've got, they're approaching three million bucks that they're sitting on. And even if you just take their earnings each year, which probably be about $150,000. Yeah, that's just earnings. That's not counting contributions or anything like that. So there's some money there and they're just, frankly, I think they're kind of wondering what to do with it. So I think what they want to do then is if they have this plan in place, they can then weave them would use it as a guide to make recommendations to the friends group and say, hey, we'd like $100,000 to do this. And then they would take the plan and say, hey, to their board and say, well, gee, this fits in with the overall plan. We're going to approve this. Okay, then what do you do? Well, at that point, at that point, we would probably, and this, we haven't done this yet, but we would take that our proposal, our recommendation, saying we'll discuss this with the friends group for XYZ program, $150,000 city council. We'd like you to endorse this and uh, do whatever you need to to get it into your budget for services and programs, whatever. And then after that's been approved, then it would come back down, and that's how you would get the money, and that's how we would implement. 
but it's on the basis of a plan. And that's what Chuck is saying is so important. And I'm, I, I happen to agree. I think we do need something like that. What kind of plan? Well, what we talked about was a really comprehensive type of plan. And uh, maybe to include not only you know goals and activities for the next five years, and I don't know if that's the right time period, but it would need to be consistent with the city. And it might even get to the point where we would say, hey, what is the role of the senior center in the community? We might that one might include that could be part of the plan. Maybe even the ordinance, the way the ordinance is defined, or the bylaws. I mean, we're talking about a really comprehensive sort of thing. Maybe not. Maybe you look at it and everything's just fine. I'm just saying a really comprehensive, like you say, 30,000 feet type look at what's going on and how we can use the friends group, the money that's there, and try to put it into something operational. And so that's what we talked about. And I thought that was pretty important. So 150 is not a whole lot of money, but it's a position. Yeah. So that's what I've got to report as far as friends is concerned. Any questions on that? Got a handout on sustainability. Seven minutes left. This is just a lot of paper. There's not a lot of solutions. I can go through this really quick. Like you can go through this at your leisure. This was the handout of the last uh, sustainability meeting. And I just wanted to remind you uh, of a couple of things. We go to page three. I've just written down three on the page. Remember when Zach Lance was here? He was talking about uh, the canopies that they were planning on putting on and reducing the heat in park areas, that sort of thing. They are in the process right now, the first bullet point on page three. They are in the process of reviewing bids to install uh, shade canopies over different areas of the city. So that's moving right along. And then under older adults, the second bullet point, they mentioned that what they're in the process of doing is interactive display at that in the uh, senior center of Bobby. Ronnie, I was going to ask you, have they done anything on that? Or has anything happened there? No. Okay, no, the invite, uh, the display that they put up. Is that it? Just the display? Yeah. Okay. That's what I remember. I don't remember interactive. I just remember the display. Well, they're sort of interactive. Well, they put, they, they put. Yeah. So sorry. I thought you meant like staff interaction or. Uh, yeah. So they put pins and then there's a couple of cups for them to put information. But it asks a question, I believe. Okay. okay. So they did follow up on yeah. that. So that's important. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then on page um, page five, this is not directly relevant, just kind of indirectly. Uh, we've talked about recycling ordinances. Just for your information, on June first of this of this year, recycling is required for commercial and multifamily properties. Mm -hmm. Okay. We follow that stuff. It's moving along. Second bullet point, and January 1st of next year, composting is required for food wholesalers, distributor, manufacturers, grocery stores. To me, that's a big deal. You know, that's, that's, that's a lot of movement in, in the city. And then um, the recycling resource that's um, nothing in particular. And there's, uh, so that's the main point I wanted to make there. And the only other thing I wanted to mention was so you can look through that as you have to read. I just thought it, I thought I'd bring you up to date on what the sustainability is doing. Uh, okay, future agenda items. <clears throat> Tell me what coordinated entry was again. Coordinated entry is um, the process for um, unhoused individuals to go through um, to start the path toward toward housing. Oh. Okay, so do we need a presentation on that or 
I'm not quite sure what they're doing about. Can you say that real quick? It's kind of like, go ahead. Go ahead, no, go ahead. I was just thinking, it's kind of like signing up with the city to, or the county, to let them know you're going to be interested in any housing programs and any services or any benefits by signing up that would be available to you? Am I kind of saying it correctly? Right, right. It's um, it's actually, HOPE does the coordinated entry for Longmont. And so it's meeting with um, somebody and just talking about, you know, what your needs are and kind of, like I said, starting the path to um, to being housed, getting um, resources, uh, learning about what's available um, and starting that path to hopefully get, you know, something like a Section 8 voucher, for example. So do we need to someone someone come talk about that? So, so the board had mentioned that in the past. Yeah, so I know. That I'm in. not quite sure what and, we were going to do with it. And I know we've had somebody present before, but with new the discussion was with the you know the new board members that we do have that were not part of the previous would that, conversation. Would, would that be a good thing to wait until after the first year with some other new board members here by now? That's up to this group. Yeah. I, I think it'd be a good idea to wait till okay. yeah. January or February to find out. Yeah. So yeah. That way, the new board members. Right. You're the only one going off the board, right? I think so. I think so. And so that's a uh, okay. We might change by January. Yeah. We'll think about it then after. But, um, there's no problem with that. Vision Zero and Micro Transit, uh, Transit in October. Who's presenting that? Um, probably Cami and uh, Phil. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. We, I think I told you, we haven't come to Village on Main, mm -hmm. and it was great to see people's interest. They had no idea about the micro transit. Right. So, if you want that, that's something that Ronnie could reach out to, <coughs> and we already started that in the but you could formalize that and just copy date. Mm -hmm. Okay. All October. right. October. October. Um, I'm going to skip, skip down to legislative updates here for a second. Uh, I had a, a phone call from Sandy Cedar. She said she's willing to come in any time, October, November, December, any time we want her to, and talk about the legislative process. Uh, I'll send you in December. That's before, that's just before the legislature starts. Maybe that would be a good time. What do you think? So. I think it would be nice if we got a before and an after from them. Oh, you know, right. this is what's what's coming up, and then after the legislature's done, this is what that's has passed. That's a really good idea. So I think it would be a good idea to get yeah. it twice. Yeah. 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 That's an excellent idea. She's amazing. She is so yes. knowledgeable. She's very yes. grateful. Is that okay with that? That's yeah. a great idea. So okay. you reach out and then copy Dave for, are you looking at uh, November then? Or December? Wait, wait. Uh, no, uh, December. Yes. Oh, December for that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just then. Just uh, right Sam. before the session, then maybe in April or something. December and then. Uh, yeah, I'm racing to get done here. Um, two areas that I'd like to bring up, and I'd like to have speakers mm -hmm. of mental health and, and uh, addiction and employment and i'll do it if i got the blessing of the group but mental health and addiction is a major problem in the community mm -hmm. and it's a major problem with older adults mm -hmm. we just don't hear about it that much but i would like to have a meeting with a brand name whoever I understand, <coughs> and others in the community so we have a good grasp of what the issues are in the community the depth of the problem. So I don't know, for example, you know, what's the scope of the problem in the moment? What are the resources we have available? Where does the senior center fit in? What are some needs that we might be able to meet with some additional lobbying or proposals to the city council? Now, I don't know any of that stuff. All I know is that there's a problem. And I'd like to have a presentation I don't, like I say, I'll, I'll work with uh, Brandy and whoever else in the community. I don't even know what mental health providers we have uh, in, in the whole lot. And so all of that stuff's information. I have a feeling that most of you don't know how to do that. But you've also got Boulder County, too. 
Yeah, exactly. Got that. Yeah. So I'd like to. I'll, I'll go ahead with. Uh, unless. I'll try to get that together for the next meeting. Okay. Would that be okay? So you well, have a what, report. No, you're you have vision zero, zero for the there. next meeting. Yeah, the October. And then so that would be no. But just to give her a, just to give a report on where he's at, he's saying. Oh. Okay. We'll just have it together by. Yeah, that no, don't no, take it. A real long time, I don't think. So the main presentations would be mental health and addiction, and uh, so the November meeting, right? At the October meeting. So, yeah. Wait. Are okay. you saying to have them come and speak at the October meeting, or just to give us an update on where you're at? Because October is actually be Vision Zero. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's really our, important. Okay. Did we decide everybody? We're going to have Vision Zero and Micro Transit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. I, I kind of yeah. missed that. Okay. The November. Mental okay. Health and Addiction? Yes. That's it'll be time. November. Yeah. And that might be a good. Um, Before the holidays. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, yeah, this, just for your information, it's a common misperception that suicide is greater around the holidays than it is in the holidays. Oh, yeah. it's, that's not the case. Uh, Anyway, we can still have it in November. And then employment of seniors, that's something I that's something I would really like to get into, but I don't think we need to we don't need to talk about that right now. I just sure. like to have it on the list. Sure. Yes. Sounds good. Okay. Any of oh my gosh, we have over five minutes. <laughs> okay. Any just other one, wait, one quick question. I've asked this probably three or four times, but when do uh when, when uh, do they start opening the, the positions for the advisory boards? Um, it would be whenever, uh, whenever your term. Okay, my, my term actually ends in December, but they usually open it a couple of months before, don't they? Yeah, Ronnie would work with the clerk's office. I'll reach out. You'll reach out and find yeah. out. Yeah. 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 Because we're going to have a couple of positions, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's just yours. No, she was. No, you've got Sheila. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. To replace Sheila, yeah. Sheila. Oh, Sheila, yes. Okay. All right, let's have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh, who said that? Arlene? Okay, second. Lonnie? Uh, Lonnie? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? It's Jen.